Karens, famously known for their self-centeredness, are known to have a victim complex, often feeling that they are being targeted unjustly. Carrying the royal weight of drama on their shoulders, they surely have a flair for demanding the impossible to the point that it's hard for them to rationalize reality. I want to talk to the manager. Okay. But what happens when this entitlement draws up short, especially in the face of the law? The former love and hip-hop star Raymond Benzino Scott is pulled over by the police for failure to appear on an insurance ticket. Right off the bat, his argumentative colors are apparent, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm gonna take it out of your thing, I'm gonna file a complaint. That's fine. No, this ain't okay. no traffic. The police are trying to help him see their perspective, but he is defiantly steadfast in his narrative. He just, he just runs my tag and he says I was blocking the street. Yeah, we're allowed to run your tag. No, but I'm saying, what, what did I do wrong to run my tag? So, by law, we can run your tag no matter what. Okay, tag? Oh, okay, okay, all right. And no I'll problem. explain it to you, okay? I don't know if he did, okay? No, no problem. So, I, didn't, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't okay. know that I could just be harassed for any old reason. It is almost comical that he's throwing allegations of harassment and racism out there. But only time will tell who the true racist is. I'm going to file a complaint. That's fine. No, this okay. ain't no traffic That's fine. I know it's fine. But you know what? If he thinks he can call the law enforcement officers and be favored in the situation, he's got another reality check coming. As time passes by, it is apparent in his body gestures that he is looking down on the Asian officer. Okay, that's not a good enough reason. Okay? So I did not know that. Like she said, by law, we don't have, we don't need a reason. She already said okay. that. She already said All right, that. you established that, okay? Yes, she so said it's that. not harassment. But then, if I feel it is, it is. Okay. If I feel it, it is, it is. is. And this will only become more prominent later. Again, the suspect is using the race car. With a man who is so terrorized by unfairness and how different races are treated, surely he shouldn't attempt something of the same, right? Wrong. I feel like I'm being harassed. Well, you're not. Okay. Well, okay. well I feel like I am. That's I fine if you right. feel that okay. way, but I'm telling you right. you're not. You have well, to I have that right. Out. I have that right to feel like I'm being harassed. You can okay? feel that way. Benzino was arrested for the act of warrant against him, and there it is. The first use of his racial slur against the Asian policeman. All his credibility is out the window once he stoops to that level. You live in 6305, right? I can't talk. I ain't gonna say shit Watch out, sir. Watch out. Hold on. That's the right there. What are you, what is the field like, sir? Find out yourself, right? How about that? And he won't stop with only one slur. Benzino's racist tirade is in full swing. And this Asian cop needs to get a medal for his professionalism. It's not easy to sit there driving a car while another human hurls vile profanities at you. The verbal assault doesn't stop, and the ride to the police station feels like forever. Fuck did I do it? Fuck you! Fuck you too! Fuck you too! Fucking racist bastard, I didn't do nothing. And I swear to God, if that ticket ain't valid, I'm gonna sue your fucking cocksucker ass. Cause I didn't do shit. Okay, can you put your yeah, fuck you. Sir, fuck you. Fuck you. Can you put your fuck you. The way Benzino was acting, it's a shame he was allowed to be on national TV at some point in time. Whether Benzino had a warrant out for him or not, none of that matters now. Because even if he isn't charged for anything else, he'll be charged for a hate crime. It's no surprise the officer doesn't want to engage in conversation with that horrendous man right now. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do shit. Hold on, Watson. I didn't do shit. And that fucking war better be right. It better be valid. And while Benzino isn't regretting his rambling right now, he'll pay for it dearly later. The officer again displays a strong sense of goodwill as he calls an ambulance over after Benzino complains about feeling lightheaded. But as he refuses, it only proves that some people aren't worth being kind to. Right. Let's get some fucking water. It's his call, so. I don't have water. They have water, too. I mean, well, he wants to give me some pork fried rice and a fortune cookie, you bitch, and fuck. So you want to go to the hospital? Because, I mean, the car's off, yeah. so it's probably why it feels like crap. Yeah. The next stop will be the police station for him. Even after reaching the police station, Benzino feels no shame in threatening an officer in broad daylight. See, you're just disrespectful. You're just a disrespectful little fucking cunt. You think you're tough because you got a fucking thing, but if, if you didn't have that the thing, that everything, you know what I'm saying? Which, which you gonna fight me? Huh? I'm not gonna huh? fight you, sir. With the way he's been bullying the officer, he should really consider picking on someone his own size. 
Despite being called every racial slur under the sun, the officer calmly explains Benzino's ticket and circumstances to him and becomes an example of how a role model officer should be. He is arrested for failing to appear on the required court date, but is released later. We're hoping he can only improve his behavior from here on out. This intoxicated lady thinks she can get out of her handcuffs by flirting with the cop. You wanna taste me? No. Do it. Stay in the blue like box. It. I like it kinky. But she's reminded quite quickly just how professional the police can be. Grace was driving her car when she allegedly crashed into another vehicle at a Brunswick, Ohio junction before speeding off. However, Officer Dominic saw the incident and pulled her over. Straight from the get-go, the officer could tell Grace is about to be a handful to deal with. As her sentences are slurred, her mannerisms seem provocative. Okay, and I want you to... Why did you... Get on me like that! 46 headquarters, it's a female. Alright, step out. A white step female. Out. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. And she holds no remorse over her actions. This isn't even the tip of the iceberg, as her questionable behavior will only escalate from here. Another interesting thing to note is Grace denied being on anything previously, but then admitted to having two doubles this time around. We're drinking or something? No. How much you have to drink there? Two doubles. Grace's antics are only starting, and the officer isn't prepared for what length she will go to later on. Grace makes a simple interrogation process as difficult as she can for the officer, throwing comments like handsome man in between. But if she thinks the officer will be shaken by these teasing words, she's delusional. The number of alcoholic drinks just keeps piling up, and it's ridiculous how she thinks she was safe to be behind the wheel in a state like that. Moreover, she's taking the situation very lightly, throwing another pet name babe towards the officers. But she's about to be more vulgar in a bit. Even the officer is taken aback by her brazenness as she confidently admits she was drinking and driving and then adding inappropriate comments after that. Well, I think you're drinking and driving right now. Um, definitely. Because who can stand a regular without drinking? Who can what? Right now, you, you can't sell a dick without selling it for a tongue. What do you mean? The officer attempts to divert the conversation and then takes her down to the police station where she hits an all-time low. It's quite a disgusting display from her end, considering she is a grown woman who should know better than to use a police car as a public toilet. It's also remarkable how the officer has maintained his patience with her so far. Just when you think it can't get any worse, it does. Grace resorts back to the cheap comments, inviting the officer to tase her because she'll like it. But in reality, she won't at all. The officer entertains her drunken tantrums, but it won't excuse her from the charges on her head. After this roller coaster, she is eventually charged with operating a vehicle under the influence, speeding, obstruction of official business, and assaulting a police officer. You're probably wondering how things got to this point of this Karen getting arrested. Okay, let's take it back a little. Nala, an Egyptian American and her husband, with a friend, 2021. At this time, the COVID-19 pandemic was still very much in the air, making safety measures, like wearing a mask, very necessary. The woman walked into the store without her mask. All these employees did was ask her to wear her mask, according to the store's policy. But this woman made it a huge deal and escalated the whole situation as she began disrespecting them, hurling insults at them. Muslims? Oh my God. Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. Um, here we go. Um, here we go. I'm tipping you. I'm tipping you. Um, here we go. Oh, I love your garb. You look like a fucking. Yeah. Nala, witnessing the whole thing, began recording the situation. This woman said and did a number. The shocking part was, she was the one who called the police despite starting the whole scene. And by what she did, she not only abused the Muslims, she racially abused the African American community because they are black Muslims. Pull, pull that up, pull that up, honey. Yeah, pull the ugly women. Hi, I'm at Walgreens. These guys are calling me. They're Muslims. They're here in our country. In our country. And she's added battery to the list. Now she's put her mask on. Was that so hard to do? She really didn't have to do all that. She not only racially abused them, she cussed and even spat on them. And that's not even all. But things took an expected turn as her police call backfired on her. And that's how we got here. 
What's even more bizarre was this woman, who was all agitated and keen on getting these people arrested, began apologizing when she realized she was the only person who would be detained there. Not sure the Christian community would be so proud of this attitude. That's indeed concerning. One amazing thing about this case was that these same people she abused decided to be the better people and not press charges. They won her over without even putting up a fight. She was released on the scene. What should have been a nice shopping experience at a South Florida Walgreens went south real quick for a Muslim family when a racist white woman attacked them. This footage received from Nala Ibade's YouTube channel, the Muslim woman being targeted, shows the vicious verbal and physical attack from the offender. The bystanders are helpless to the onslaught, uncertain of what the woman is capable of. It is quite a distressing sight to behold as she calls the police with a surge of entitlement, pretending as if she is the victim of the situation. The footage speaks for itself about what people of color face on a regular basis, but they won't have to tolerate this any longer as the police are on their way. The cops immediately clock out who the culprit is in this situation and swiftly arrest the racist woman without any delay. It's pretty satisfying to see how the smug expression slips off her face as the realization of the consequences hits her. An expression of relief can be seen on the victim's faces as the woman is dragged off to the police car. She has adopted a complete 180 degree turn of a personality, choosing to plead with the officers, but it's too late for any of that now. Apologizing to her victims won't save her from the handcuff she's already in. It's clear as the light of day that she means nothing of what she's saying. Her attitude is a facade and no one is buying it. The Muslims have full right to prosecute her, but they choose to be the bigger people and let her go. Had she been caught among the wrong people, she wouldn't be so lucky. The officer gives her a stern lecture as he removes the handcuffs, but she exhibits no signs of gratitude or understanding. After some nonsensical rambling, the woman finally leaves the scene, having been saved by the very people she terrorized. She didn't face any repercussions this time, but she's sure to have learned a lesson. Another famous story is that of Susan Lawrence, who places multiple calls to law enforcement about children trespassing in her part of the neighborhood. I don't want to be intimidated by them screaming and yelling at me, telling me I'm a bitch, calling me Karen. Call, I mean, they're calling me names. Really, we're gonna, you know, devolve with this simple bullying. I don't want to face it. She is calmly seen explaining her issue related to the woman she will later go on to kill in cold blood. He's just trespassing hey, right now. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. trespassing yeah, right you. now. He's trespassing. He came over to come ask us a question. According to one of the many police officers who attended too many of Susan Lawrence's calls complaining about the youngsters that played joyously in her neighborhood, she is a psycho. The woman must be mentally trapped in the 1800s because she considers herself to be some sort of overseer with authority over the gloomy youth. Every time, like even okay, if we're not- Hold on, hold on. Let's bring it down. Okay, I'm sorry. You're okay. Every time, yeah. even if we're not on our property and we're just like, uh, like being loud and playing basketball over there because the basketball hoop, I gotcha. Like she- she just calls us names. Isn't this a lovely story of community bonding? Yeah, no. 58-year-old Lawrence takes it upon herself to educate the young neighborhood kids with her vast vocabulary. She graciously shares the N-word and some imaginative racial slurs with the little academics, which I'm sure they'll remember for the rest of their lives. She even tosses them a history lesson about the Underground Railway for good measure. If I've ever seen a lack of manners and social grace, this is it. This woman will be arrested for the manslaughter she will go on to commit. Could, what kind of names is she calling you guys? Retards, the B-word. On April 26, 2022, an officer was conducting surveillance on a vehicle when the automatic license plate reader read that the driver's registration was suspended. The police officer approached the car, and the driver, later identified as Generos Cressing Saunders, refused to comply with his commands. While the officers tried to remove her from the car, she did the unthinkable. She exhibited the character of a typical Karen. And let's see where that got her. Stop. I, I don't feel safe. I do not feel safe. Don't trap my arm. Don't trap my arm. Whoa, what are you doing? Hey, ma'am, right lower now? the window. You're going to hurt this lower officer. Lower your window. Ma'am, lower, lower the window. Lower your window with your other arm. Ma'am, lower, lower your window. window with your other arm. Jenny Rose closed the window on the officer's arm and began kicking it. This is such a wicked attitude, and no one should go through that. But this Karen did it to a police officer anyway. Lower the window. You are now under- Stop! 
Ma'am, lower the window. Ma'am, lower the window. Uh, Ma'am, lower the window. And as expected, she was arrested, and she definitely has a laundry list of charges waiting for her. And she didn't even keep her mouth shut after being detained, showing how unremorseful she was. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. Turn around. 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 Turn a man she had just had dinner with came out and asked what had happened. It's unknown if he's her boyfriend, husband, or just a friend, but I'm not sure this man knows the kind of monster he's been with. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, I just had dinner with her tonight. Okay. Take your hands out of your pocket for me. Appreciate it. Okay, she's under arrest right now. And then when she when she is released, when she gets out, she can give you a call. Okay? Jenny Rose was eventually taken to police custody, where she continued her unruly behavior. The police confirmed Kessing Saunders also had an active warrant out of Branchburg and a fugitive warrant out of the Bucks County Sheriff's Department. With this kind of attitude, it's not surprising. However, she'll be adding this to the list. Kessing Saunders was arrested and charged with aggravated assault on a police officer, resisting arrest, and obstruction of justice. And here's yet another Karen with a firearm. Get out of the car right now. No! I told you I can handle this peacefully, but you have to get out of the car. No, you have never yeah. said that. Obstructing arrest is one thing, but attempting to bite the officer while resisting it is a whole different crime. And that's exactly what happened in the case of Sean Malarkey, who was running on an arrest warrant for hitting her ex-husband with a car. The cops trace her back to her garage, but things get even more insane. As one of the cops arrives at the garage and orders her to leave the vehicle, he finds Sean totally non-responsive to his commands. While ignoring, she closes the garage, preventing the officer from getting backup, which can backfire on her as she gives the cop a reason to get aggressive by appearing to be a threat. We'll talk about everything, but get out of the car. Yep. 20x per day, we're in the garage, she's closing. Yep, step out. Excuse me, excuse step out. No, excuse me. Step out. Put your hands off of me. And to make matters even worse, her children are also there in the backseat of the car witnessing all this. That's because the police have a legal right to arrest someone by coming into their house if they have reasonable evidence. And in this case, there's an official warrant. Get your hand off of Stop. Me. I told you you're under arrest. Get out of the car. Why? Because you have a warrant. And you're wanted no. for a domestic battery. Yes, you are. Excuse me. I just sent a message and I am... Excuse me. Her counter arguments are nothing apart from mimicking what the officer says. She has no concrete reason to argue, and is just making things frustrating for everyone unnecessarily. But that doesn't last too long, as another cop arrives and successfully detains her. However, that doesn't stop her from bickering in front of her kids. Unfortunately for her, in this situation, even her attorney would have asked her to surrender obediently. So, at this point, there is nothing reasonable that can prevent her from getting arrested, and that's visible in her illogical babbling. When she sees that nothing works, she decides to become even more annoying by choosing disrespect and vulgarity. As she continues on her ranting session, the officer notices something that can make things even messier. As it would turn out, she actually was under the influence of alcohol when she hit her ex-husband while carrying kids in the car. But that's not the only charge that she'll face. This attempt at biting an on-duty police officer is a third-degree felony, which can land her $10,000 fine or even 10 years in prison. She's been gaslighting everyone by playing the victim. Even now, she's making it seem like the officer was insensitive, whereas she was the one who made him resort to dire and forceful options. After everything, she faces charges of aggravated DUI, the third violation due to a child passenger, aggravated assault, violation of bail bond, and resisting arrest. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, more criminals are killed or wounded each year by armed citizens than by the police. This proves that owning a gun is possibly the most effective way to protect oneself from crime. But flashing a gun at ordinary citizens is definitely an abuse of the right to own a firearm. However, this is what this Karen did outside a store over a slight altercation with an unarmed citizen. On October 2nd, 2021, officers responded to a call about a woman waving a gun in the parking lot of the store. The officers got to the location, entered the store, and began searching for the woman who matched the victim's description. And when she was finally found, she denied it. However, this is just one of the many things she lied about. She played dumb about the whole situation and claimed she drives a BMW. That's another lie. And as the police officer said, he didn't know if she had committed any crimes yet, but then she was the only one who matched the victim's description. 
and when the police found her, she was nowhere near the restroom, but now she wants to use one. That's definitely nervousness, a typical feeling of guilt. She denied having a firearm in her purse, but she wouldn't allow the police to check. Hi, how are you? You don't happen to have a gun in your bag, do you? No, sir. Okay. You mind if I look real quick? In my purse? Mm-hmm. Oh. I said there's a black female with a red, pant, red pants that had a gun. I had a gun and I just turned into here. Okay, I understand that. What car do you drive? What car do you drive? Okay. What car do you drive? I drive a white BMW. White BMW, okay. Well, I hope she's ready to bear the consequences. She began shaking after she learned she'd be detained. That's definitely not bold enough for someone who could flash a gun at a fellow citizen. The police met with the victims, and it's time to uncover the lies she's told so far. And of course, the bag was searched and the gun was found. This woman, later identified as Maria Brown, had lied about being in an altercation earlier, possessing a gun and her identity. She's definitely piled up a couple of charges for herself. Maria was charged with aggravated assault, possession of a firearm by a felon, and obstruction. She wouldn't get out of that so easily. And while Maria lied about many things, this next woman is the definition of insane, as she caused the whole scene out of nothing. 